The November employment report showing a gain of 199,000 jobs last month. That was slightly more than expected. Unemployment rate drops to 3.7 percent. Average hourly earnings slightly hotter than expected as well. Let's talk about it with Goldman Sachs chief economist Jan Hatzius. He joins us at Post 9. Nice to see you, as Good always. Nice to see you as well. On Jobs Day. So the market now is liking this number because good jobs growth, wages a little bit firmer, but nothing, I think, too hot. What's your take? Overall, I think it's a very friendly report, mm -hmm. and it, I think, takes away any, any uh, concerns that the household survey is weakening. It had been running weaker than the establishment survey, so the unemployment rate had been drifting up in recent months, and some of that was reversed. I think that's reassuring. Payroll growth is firm, but gradually decelerating towards the trend pace. And I think the increase in average hourly earnings helps on the income side, but doesn't really take away the gradually slowing trend in wage growth. And I do think wages are gradually decelerating to something more sustainable in the sort of three and a half percent range by late next year. Are you sure about that? Because that's the one that the Fed is going to be most interested in relative to some of the strength in the labor market, right? It's that wages are still growing four percent from last year. Well, I'm not sure about any forecast <laughs> because it is a forecast after all. But I do think that if you look across the different wage indicators, things are gr gradually coming down to something more sustainable. And I would also point out the unit labor cost numbers that came out this week, unit labor costs are now up 1.6 percent on a year-on-year -year basis, which is, you know, very benign and certainly consistent with inflation getting back to the Fed's target. So given these pretty friendly numbers on jobs, did the market get too excited and ahead of itself on pricing rate cuts next year? Yeah, I think potentially a little bit. And of course, there's been a uh, step back on that post this report. The market is looking for cuts. You know, pretty early March at this point is, you know, half priced or so. And I think a lot would have to happen for them to go that soon. You know, I think the key thing, though, from a broader perspective, is that they can cut if the economy were to see more of a, of a slowdown than we expect, then the Fed could cut and could provide some support. And that means the risk of recession is in my view, quite low. We're at 15 percent over the next 12 months. So what, what's realistic to expect as far as the first cut? Where are you? I think in the second half of the year is more realistic than in the first half. But again, the, it, it's going to depend on the data and sure. they could respond to uh, a slowdown more quickly. Or if inflation comes down even more quickly to the target than what we have in our forecast, they could also go somewhat earlier. What do you expect for inflation? into the Fed meeting next week? We are looking for a somewhat firmer number on core CPI, you know, 0.3 rather than 0.2. I think that doesn't necessarily feed through into the PCE numbers, which is the index that the Fed is most focused on, because there are quite a lot of uh, sort of differences between PCE and, and CPI. But this number could also look a little bit firmer along the lines of what we saw in today's report.